Welcome back, everybody, students, families. So glad that you were able to join us for week three. Now, this is our first dress up night. Hopefully, you guys are in your team colors, your blues, or your orange, and you guys are decked out, earning those points for your team. I can't wait to get this week started, and we're going to have a lot of fun, a lot of fun things, crafts. Um, we have music, lessons, games, small groups all ready for you guys this week. Hopefully you guys enjoy and we'll see you at the end. Hi guys! We're back! And look how I'm dressed! I got a hat! You know why? Because it's Team Color Day! Can you tell what team I'm rooting for? Go Blue Team! Yay! Go Blue Team! If you are not dressed in your team color before you get to small group, make sure you are because if you're dressed in your team group color, you get extra points. So remember, don't leave yet, but when you get a break, change into your team color. Now, today's craft is going to be a lot of fun. Let me show you what you should be pulled out of your bag. Some bird seed, grab a plate or something to put the bird seed on. And ahead of time, we asked you to get um, some type of butter or if you're allergic to peanut butter, don't get peanut butter. You can get um, some type of oil, coconut oil or lard or something like that. If you're not sure, ask a parent to help. A cardboard tube and some twine. The twine is going to go through the tube and you're going to tie it like this so you can hang it on the tree. You're going to take your seed and you're gonna pour it on the plate. We also put in your bag a stick. You know what that stick's for? It is to use as a knife. You're going to take your tube and you're going to spread the butter or whatever it is that you are using onto your tube. Now, one of the reasons why I picked this craft for you guys to do was because we're talking about how God provides for our needs and how we shouldn't be afraid that um, God took care of the flowers and the birds Hey, the birds, bird feeder, see the connection? <laughs> and that we shouldn't be afraid because um, God's going to provide for you too. And then what you can do is you roll it in like that. Then you can slip your twine through here, tie it in a knot, hang it outside where your parent says is a good spot, maybe by a window. And then you can watch the birds come up, maybe even a squirrel. That's what we did at my house. We put it in the squirrels got it. You can even, if you have a pine tree, you can get some pine cones and do this at, um, with pine cones too. And then your craft's done. Another thing, if you, um, if your parents say it's okay, take some pictures, post them on our social media, and you get extra points for that as well. All right, my friends. Now, our memory verse comes from Matthew 6.33. Let me read it. It says here, this is the long verse for the older kids, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. The paraphrase for the younger kids is um, God will provide for you, Matthew 6.33. Now, there's a little tune we can sing that to. That way you guys can remember it. It goes, God will provide for you, provide for you, provide for you. God will provide for you, Matthew 6.33. Have fun at games. Bye.
back everybody. Hopefully you guys had a lot of fun with the game last week. Hopefully you guys were a lot better than us. You maybe had some heavier cups, but let us know how you liked that. So today's game is a classic game brought indoors. It is volleyball. So, but not the regular type of volleyball. We are going to use a balloon or you can use a tinier ball that looks like this. Maybe you can use a sock that's rolled up. Anything that you can get your hands on. So we're going to play two different types. One, if you are in the younger crowd, we're going to suggest you guys use a balloon. But if you're a little bit older and you have the coordination or the desire to, you can use something that is a little bit heavier and will travel a little bit faster. But for today's video and game, we are going to have a few guests join us today. You guys all know Pastor Ken, right? We all love Pastor Ken. So him and his daughter, Sadie, are going to play the game with us today. So it's going to be Evan and I first. Pastor Ken and Sadie. Let us know who you think is going to win. Alright, so for today's game of volleyball, you have to start on your knees. So everybody get down on your knees. Yeah, that's it. So I'm going to come back over here. And it's traditional. You're just going to hit it up, hit it back and forth. Whoever, whoever side it drops on, the opposing side gets the, uh, gets the dub or the win. So, All right, yeah. let's do it. So you guys can play to however many points you want. Three points, five points, or you can keep going until your time is up. But we're going to go ahead and serve it. We'll see who gets the first point. It went off of the stage, so that is a point for our side. Woo! So we will show you <laughs> we will show you how to do it with the others. So if you're younger you might want to use a balloon but if you're older you can use something a little bit heavier. And if it hits the ground your side gets a point. If it hits the ground on the opposite side. So you're going to take the ball. You might want to be a little bit tricky not letting them know when it's going to come so you can just go like that. But if they catch it, no point. And then they're going to throw it over to this side. So you guys want to be ready. <laughs> that ties it up 1-1. One, one. So that's how the game will work. Hopefully you guys have a lot of fun. Play with your family. If you guys have more than one sibling, play with your brothers and sisters. Have fun with it. See you guys next week. And don't break anything.
Welcome everyone. So glad you guys were able to uh, tune in once again. We are going to continue with some of our stories about Jesus. Now, in today's story, it is a uh, setup for what we're going to hear next week. You you hear often or read often in books. Um, you have chapters that are setting up events that are still to come later on in the book. Maybe you've seen a movie that does that. I know uh, Star Wars does that really well. I, I, I'm a big Star Wars fan and each movie is a, a continual setup for what is to happen in the end. So you're following this story and as it builds you're getting more and more excited for what's to come. Alright, so we know that happens a lot in Star Wars. They're building the the um, scenes. They're adding on to the story on what's coming. It's making you excited. It's getting you ready for what you're about to see. We're going to see that in today's story. Today's story is going to start at Palm Sunday, which leads in to Easter. And we're going to start with what is known as the triumphal entry. And we can find that in Matthew chapter 21. We see it starting off. Jesus and his disciples, they're about to enter Jerusalem. And when they're doing so, they're fulfilling prophecy as they are doing that. Prophecy is uh, something that is uh, said and that is to uh, uh, on the events that are to come. And there is a, uh, a message from, from God given to someone to uh, deliver. So uh, we, uh, we've seen uh, prophecies throughout the, the whole Bible. And now we're seeing uh, some of them start to unfold. So if we... Look to chapter 21. We are going to start at the very beginning. And it says this. Now when they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethphage, the, to the mountain of Olives, when Jesus sat, sent two disciples, um, saying to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied Tied, and a colt with her, and uh, untie them and bring them to me. If in, anyone says among you, you shall anything. If anyone says anything to you, sorry. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, the Lord needs them, and He will send them at once. This took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet. So uh, the, he uh, he mentions a. Uh, a prophet um, it meant saying uh, that they're going to go into Jerusalem and he is in need of a donkey. So Jesus is starting to unravel this uh, prophecy. He's sending two of his disciples. He says, go, go get a donkey. And uh, if anyone says you, tell them I, I need it. So this, uh, this prophecy came from Zechariah 9.9. And it quotes it in Matthew. And this is what it says. Say to the daughter of Zion, Zion, behold, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the fowl of a, a beast and, and burden. So it's, he's starting to uh, unplay this, uh, this, uh, this prophecy and he's uh, grabbing this, uh, this colt. And he's taking him and he's going to ride it into Jerusalem. We know it is called Palm Sunday. A lot of you know why it's called Palm Sunday. Because as they were riding into the city, the people around start laying palm branches on the, the ground. It says that they're, they're laying palm trees on the ground and they're spreading it out on the, the road. They're crying out, Hosanna. And they're doing this as one would do for, for a king. They're honoring Jesus as he's uh, riding in on, on a donkey. But 
one thing or the one passage that I want to look at today, it is uh, describing the character of, uh, of Jesus. It describes it really well. Um, who this guy is guy is that is coming because next week we're going to learn about the the crucifixion and the resurrection of this same same person so we want to first look at who it is before we go into what he did for us so we're going to look back at that that prophecy and it says a few things that give a very good um, a characteristic um, a, a, a description of who this guy is. First, it says he is a, a king. It says uh, it says our king is coming to you. And how he how is he coming to you? He's coming to you humbly. And he is uh, he's coming to you to to you humbly. He's he's just. He's bringing salvation with him, which is something that we're going to be looking at next week. Um, but be, uh, before that, we, we're looking at just his, his characteristics. So we see that he's, uh, he's humble. He's bringing salvation. And not only that, he's riding on, on a donkey. That's why he had his uh, disciples go and grab, grab this donkey. He's... Pr- um, it, he's uh, fulfilling this this prophecy by by doing that. Um, I know a lot of you thinking, why why would he pick pick a donkey? That's not exactly the the animal one would think of when they're thinking, oh, a king's going to ride into into town. Oh, he's going to do it on a donkey. No, like when I when I hear that, I'm like, oh, he's he's it's a horse. Like it's the just a big. Uh, Big parade with him, following it behind him, um, and it, it's a powerful animal. It's not like it's not a a, a donkey. Lots of uh, people don't see that as as an animal worthy to for a, a king to to ride. But I know they they set they're setting up what we're about to hear very very well. They're letting us know who who this guy is. I know when I was uh, younger, I would want to uh, set up news for for my parents to uh, to hear, whether it was good news or or bad news. Um, we I would feel the need to uh, kind of set up what what I'm about to uh, tell them, what what I need to tell them, and uh, too often it was uh, not the best news. So. Uh, I remember one time I was rollerblading with my buddy, and we took our dogs, uh, my dogs, with us because we're like, oh, they can they can pull us. We'll go a lot faster, and this was a good idea. It turns out it's not such a good idea. I don't recommend rollerblading with your with your dogs. Um, circumstances happened that my my dogs wanted to chase cats more than. Uh, um, pull us and stay alongside of us. So I end up actually tripping over a leash, getting hurt, and I actually cracked my my head open. Um, so my buddy goes and he finds my mom. And he's like, "Okay, okay, so you you know your your son, right? Like he's okay, he's okay, but um, there's we've been a little accident. He's preparing her for." what she's about to see. As I come around the corner, she notices that something is not right. And we, we do this a lot in, in our lives. How do we prepare for events, um, important events that are coming to, uh, to us? Are we prepared for, uh, for what is, uh, is to come? We uh, see that these uh, that, that God's people were, were ready for the Messiah to, to come. They've heard about the, the coming Messiah for a long, long time. And finally, it's starting to, starting to happen. And they're ready for, for Him coming, 
coming just as it says that he he would but i want to ask you guys in in your lives are you are you ready for for christ's coming are you uh, are you prepared for um what it is that um that he's going to uh, eventually bring it bring with him we don't know when he's uh, he's coming back because we also it also says in the the bible that he's coming that he's coming back eventually and are we are we prepared for for his arrival when when we prepare for someone's arrival especially someone important to us we're going to make sure that everything is nice everything is is ready if your parents have ever invited some uh, someone over for for dinner maybe some family friends they're they're preparing for that guest arrival. They're getting the house nice and ready. Um, maybe they're making food. You're gonna have a nice dinner, but they're they're prepared. Are you guys prepared for for Christ coming back? Are you uh, doing everything that you uh, you can right now to uh, to follow Him and to honor Him and just to uh, um, ready your your hearts for His His arrival? Are you thinking about what is it is to come? Are you uh, are you ready for it? I just want to challenge you guys that always be ready for for that that event. I know we don't know when it is gonna be, which is hard sometimes. Um, sometimes we get caught unprepared sometimes, but we never want to be unprepared for something that that Christ has has promised us something that we know is going to is going to come because we know it's going to come because it's in the bible and what's in the bible is from god and we know we can trust what god says and we can trust everything that he he says so i just love this uh, this passage and how it pre prepares us and it sets us up for for what is to come we we learn who this person is is to come, and why we should be excited for for his um, for his coming, and now for his his return, we we know who uh, who God is and what he he's done for us. And in the in the passage in the, this time, they're they're waiting for their king. They're waiting for the their savior, and uh, they they are are ready for for him. So I just want to encourage all of us once again that always be ready for for our Savior and and His return um, in a, in our lives. What um, preparations are you making for for His uh, for His coming back? Let's go ahead and and pray, and then you guys can head off to your small groups. Father, I just uh, just thank you for. For this passage thank you for what it has to um set up for for us and um uh, the story isn't isn't over um uh, there's still uh, more to his uh um his coming but i just uh, am excited to uh, look at this uh, further next week and i just ask that you be with us in our small group time and uh, throughout the rest of uh, the week I just pray this in your name amen thank you guys We are done with our night. I'm so glad you guys were able to make it through. Hopefully you had a awesome time. Share your crafts with your families. Maybe you can share them with a next door neighbor who doesn't know what up is. Tell them a little bit about it. Maybe invite them next week to come and join you guys. Hopefully you were able to have a good time in those um, those uh, crafts and that games interacting with your friends and families. We are going to be heading to a small group right now and uh, have a great time with that. We'll see you guys next week.